Hey guys, today we will Messestadt. <laughs> We are building an exhibition stand. Gamescom is not taking place, at least not physically, and I miss these crowded halls. So we are building an exhibition stand. Here we go. Play, play. Being on Gamescom and on E3 was always very magical for me because games became so much more on these days, connecting to thousands of people who also love games like I do. So this year, together with Ubisoft, we planned, developed and then created this enormous project, which finally, hopefully, will be a gigantic exhibition stand. And this meant that we all in the studio were involved. Here you can see Steph preparing the base plate for this huge exhibition stand. We wanted to keep it very clean, we wanted to keep it very black and to make it very classy. <laughs> These were the reference images which we used. Big shout out and thank you to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and this gigantic art project. What about the exhibition stands itself? Crystal threw herself into these tiny cardboard stands and while preparing these I was preparing the clay figurines. Among the Ubisoft world we have many famous characters and the first one which always has a special place in my heart is this one. Super Mario, of course. He should be included on a Gamescom stand and I'd like to guide you through the process of creating such a tiny clay version of Super Mario. You may recognize I used the aluminum wire as the skeleton and then connected both parts with a smaller wire which make, made it quite easy. Um, coating with clay, we start with blue the trousers and now with red for the shirt and carefully I try to match these both together because I still want to make sure that we have um, like a hard edge between these two colors that they don't accidentally mix into each other. Please make sure to subscribe for the future videos. I think Gamescom will bring a lot new games to us and I'm so curious to create some new um, characters which I haven't done before on this channel. Now, after the first round in the oven, I can't accidentally destroy the body of Super Mario and we can pay attention to the shoes putting these onto a plate and now let's work on the soles for the shoes maybe we can mix in some brown as well because they are somehow brown ochre-ish and now it's getting even brighter with the gloves of Super Mario with five fingers all my life I thought Super Mario only had four fingers <laughs> I don't know why, maybe because some of the Disney characters have white gloves and only four fingers. Now for the head. The heads are always quite difficult because you want to make sure that it is recognizable. The moustache of Super Mario in black. Take a sharp knife or a scalpel and you should have no problems with these four curves in the beard and we can now place it right under the nose. Okay, now the eyes. We have three different colors, white, blue and for the iris let's take this black. So he is looking to the right side and maybe we get in this beautiful lighting effect 
eyebrows on both sides and we are almost there we have this part of the hair coming down from his head <laughs> and now we can attach the ears cut open his head <laughs> it's just to get a sharp connecting point to this red clay for the head the Super Mario hat. I remember the time when playing uh, Mario 64 and this very mean uh, vulture, this bird, is grabbing your hat and flying away with it. <laughs> well, it was very mean, but also Super Mario looked quite different. <laughs> Now that we have created Mario, we are creating this tiny spark, this star. Because Mario is representing Mario plus rabbits, sparks of hope. And as you probably know, I'm a big fan of this Witch game and can't wait to play, to play it finally. Um, Ubisoft has created this game and therefore, well, some of these beautiful sparks have to find their way into this gigantic project we are creating today. We have the yellow, blue and red spark. Now let's put these aside into the oven. This is a freshly baked Super Mario. All we have to do is some assembling and painting some highlights. The head is attached to the body and also this hand which fell off by accident and the big letter on the head and look at that it's Super Mario with some transparent polish we make the eyes very much alive and also this handgun gets some final work on it let's switch over to the crafting tables where Kirsten and Crystal are working on these wow <laughs> gigantic posters hanging from the ceiling. You recognize some artworks from the game Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, which is coming later this year. But we also have chosen some different games. For example, Far Cry 6, another big title I'm looking forward to play, because you can now play as a tank. <laughs> This is Rainbow Six Flores, which I also created with clay. And the snow map, and the bank, and some different operators. Oh yeah, I've done a lot of Rainbow Six in the past. Well, Kirsten decided to change these posters from El Presidente to get in this revolution feeling which is taking place in Far Cry 6 and assemble these for a tiny beautiful stand within the gigantic one. And while Crystal is assembling these I am preparing the next clay figurine which will be for the game Rainbow Six. Extraction. <laughs> I decided to go for the left operator, the standing one. I think it will be a pretty weird um, scenery when a gigantic operator is standing right next to the exhibition stand. Also for this very tiny, tiny character, we will use the aluminum wire for the skeleton to make sure that we don't screw up with the proportions of the body. And as we are working with a very tiny figurine, I decided to go with female professional because it's very hard and solid and won't change too quickly when handling this figurine in my hands. Now for the head area, well, the process of creating this tiny figurine is quite simple. I started with a black and many black details. Now bringing in some silver parts. When you have seen some trailers from Rainbow Six Extraction, 
you know that yellow is one of the important, more important colors for the operators as you are fighting some alien. <laughs> And um, they all have these suits to don't be infected by some bacteria. Now the head, very tiny one, barely recognizable as a human face. Later, after oven hardening, I try to bring in uh, a visor with some plexiglass, for example. Some last details with the white and then we can direct our attention to the weapon and also the boots. Let's start with the weapon. It should be also on the same scale, very tiny, therefore I decided to create onto the plate so that I can put it into the oven right away. I don't have to touch it anymore. Yeah, maybe we can also stick in a piece of wire right in the front. Yeah, a very thin one. Luckily, I have black wire. Look at that. Okay. What about the boots? Finished. After oven hardening, let's assemble this guy as well. Let's see if everything comes together as we were hoping for. We put in some super glue into the boots and the weapon into his hands. Now, the symbol from Rainbow Six Extraction and some further details with silver. And this used to be a brush protection and it also makes a beautiful visor for the operator. I think it's Lion, right? When we came up with all the different items which we have to create for the exhibition stand, we had the letters right at the top of our list for the Ubisoft exhibition stand. But then we also realized that we had to create hundreds of seats of tiny televisions and screens. And so we did. Steph started cutting a lot of clay, tiny black chairs, and then also created 140 screens. <laughs> he probably went nuts while doing so, and everyone had a symbol on it. Look at that. It's very tiny, but here you can see the size comparison. So it matches perfectly the unpainted tiny people, which we also wanted to bring in as the visitors from Gamescom. This video is also available on the German YouTube channel GTV, also run by Ubisoft. If you like, go check it out. I will link it right here. While building this enormous project, we were all figuring out along the way how to get these things onto the exhibition stand. This is how we found out where to glue them, these lines. It's not a police line. What is it called? Streamer? caution tape. So while Crystal is gluing this black wire on top, I am preparing the next clay figurine, this time from Rainbow Six Siege as well, Extraction, and it will be one of the monsters. This friendly guy is called a bloater. <laughs> and the game itself will be a tactical co-op shooter where you can choose between different operators and as much as I have learned, you will get like different zones uh, where you have to fight the monsters. <laughs> this game looks so promising and I can't wait to, to play this as well. It was former called Quarantine, 
And I think because of the real quarantine with COVID, uh, they changed the concept a little bit that nobody feels hurt. Um, and I think this is pretty much okay. And plus they got some more time to finish this project. Now this will be the head of the bloater with these thorns um, pointing into every direction. Okay, this looks perfect. Now let's bring in this disgusting bright green for the bubbles on the back side of this guy. He's probably infecting everyone who comes very near. He hugs him <laughs> and then you are infected by the parasite. But well, this is just a suggestion. Ubisoft, you can do whatever you want, but it would make sense. Okay, after oven hardening, we will paint some more details into this bloater, some shadows with black, but also with a green pen, we make these bubbles a little bit more, even more disgusting. And maybe also some transparent polish. Now they look like eggs. <laughs> Let's see how far Crystal and Kirsten got. Wow, this already looks amazing. During this process, and while I was focusing on clay, they did all this magical stuff. And um, I went to them from time to time and was every time amazed. This tiny exhibition stand, for example, for extraction. You can see this parasite in the backside, and this poor guy, he will be infected with a lot of glue and black paint. <laughs> I was very happy when I saw how Kirsten created this, and I think it will, yeah, look perfect together with this whole Rainbow Six Siege stand. For the Far Cry 6 stand we will also create a tinier version of this stand and later I'll bring in my very very tiny clay figurines uh, from Far Cry 6 from my trailer reaction. You may remember this video. Um, I have never created a smaller character or figurine before. and. Now this stand can also be finished and put together with some broken stones from the palace from El Presidente. And the people are already quite curious watching the son from the president taking the grenade as he has to. Now it's my turn for the clay part for Far Cry 6 and I wanted to create this dog, this paraplegic dachshund named Chor Chorizo <laughs> and um, well you may have seen him, the tiny dog and the wheelchair, but then I thought he would be too tiny on this scale, so I ended up, well, with the tank. We are creating this enormous tank um, <laughs> driving around on Gamescom or maybe just standing around and as far as I know you will finally be able to play and drive this tank in Far Cry 6 and not only the regular uh, vehicles and jeeps but also this thing. <laughs> 
Uh, it's a pretty great thing for a beginner to create. I used a lot of cutting to get these sharp edges on the tank. And we only have two colors. We have ochre and black. And now we can slowly add some further details. And for the main pipe in the front, we may use some wire as stabilization. We're just coating it with the ochre clay. And after oven hardening, we make this tank a little bit more pretty. Okay, let's put him into the oven and then let's see what we can do, which magic we can do with the pants. Steph had the idea of creating this gigantic Ubisoft building, which will be illuminated from underneath. Wow, this looks so cool. We bring in two new materials, wood and epoxy raisin. Well, this material is quite difficult and also dangerous to work with. After drying, you get this glass-like transparent layer, which looks really cool. And after drying, we can bring in Morris, who will do the electric stuff and the LED lights. For the bigger exhibition rooms, we wanted to bring in some light to make it a little bit brighter. They would have been too dark. And then... For highlighting some of these beautiful sceneries which we have... The rooms get some light inside for the cinemas. And for the outside lights, Crystal came up with a very beautiful solution to direct the light more into one direction. Wow, super glue! <laughs> it's a piece of a candle or the outside aluminum foil from a candle. And now that after the last building is placed, we can start putting all the crazy amount of visitors onto our exhibition stand. Now it's my turn to glue the clay figurines into the scenery and I wanted to tell some stories with them. Mario is looking right behind the corner and sees this yellow sparkle flying. On the other side we have the blue and also the red sparkle and they are, well, doing some fun with the visitors. The blopper from extraction is also displayed right in the middle between many visitors and the operator to kill him behind the building. And you recognize the tiny figurines from Far Cry 6 and the tank should also be placed on this stand. And guys, I guess, finally, that's it.
<sighs> wow. <laughs> okay, this is not a one-man approach. This is heavy teamwork. I'd like to thank Steph, Kirsten, Crystal, Morris for building this insanity. Andy and Max, thanks so much for editing today's video. It was a lot. I really hope that you at Ubisoft will like this project. Thanks so much for sponsoring today's video. And for you guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Leave down in the comments what you liked, what you would have done different, which games you are looking forward to play. Have an amazing weekend. Stay safe, stay creative. Bye. No, I really want to be tiny and walking inside this. Look at me, I'm huge. Oh, she has a teddy bear. Look at that.